decided that what we're going to do is change the <coughs> general agenda because I know we've got a number of people here that are anxious uh, to return on a home trip. So we'll move out and just get to the side of the table here. And Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe we need a course. And CDC can put it out. And maybe we should. Well, we were scheduled for the Kids in the high school to take it. Call. How do things work? Well, I got, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Mount Anthony Far School later. Board. Once again, idea. we're going to change the agenda a bit. One of the things that uh, I would like to do is make it a, uh, an addition to the agenda, and that is to consider a proposal and to, for the board to vote on on our solar project. We'll get more into that as we get into the finance area of the budget. But it's general procedure that if something is not on the budget, and I'm not on the agenda, and we want to include it in our meeting and take action on it, we have to announce it at the beginning of the meeting, and then it's, it becomes legal. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. And we'll change it around, and we'll have our executive session after we get through our regular business. So we'll open the meeting to, are there any public comments? Please give your name, if you would please. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry, I'm short. <laughs> um, hi. Uh, my name is Megan Morgan Piglisi. Um, I'm a math teacher in my fourth year at the high school. I am here tonight to express my frustration, worry, and general concern regarding the alt math program at Mount Anthony. Um, we have been informed that BJ Woodard's position is not in the budget for next year. <coughs> that means that when Mr. Woodard retires at the end of the school year, uh, the budget does not allow for the hiring of his replacement. Since he is a full-time math and science teacher, this would require a math teacher to take over his teaching duties. That means that we would not be able to provide all the programs we're able to provide right now. Is this what's best for our students? Uh, the elimination of programs that are positively influencing our students? Uh, there has been talk about finding the money somewhere in the budget, but that's not guaranteed, especially under the restrictions of Act 44. Um, I would like to know what other programs would be cut to provide money for this very necessary Alt math program. But I'd just like to answer that, please. Mm -hmm. we, Thank at you. the time the uh, budget was being prepared, we were aware that there were some changes that had been are being considered by the administration at the high school. At the time we put together the budget, those decisions had not become formalized, and therefore we did not include in the budget the position that B.J. Woodward uh, has. But we made it very clear that if the administration felt that that position should be filled the money would be in the budget. We would find the money in the budget to fill that position. Okay. So where we are on that is that, as far as I know, and I, I don't want to get into the discussion because that should be an administrative prerogative that they then would bring to the board. Absolutely. But uh, it is my understanding that a dis final decision has not been made as to the best way to approach that situation. I think that, well, I know, that the education committee is very concerned about the facts that you that you have mentioned, and I, I do appreciate your um, your coming here and bringing it to our attention. But I want to assure you, and the math and science teachers at the high school, that the finance committee and the education committee made it very clear that if they if the administration felt that it was necessary or to the benefit of the kids or it would be a, a, a not a good thing to refill that position, that we would find the money in the budget somewhere to fill that position. Thank you, Tim, and thank yep. you, everybody. Okay, are there any, any other public comments? Okay, we can move on then to a discussion concerning the distribution of condoms. And before we begin, I'd like to just thank the number of people that have been involved in this and the amount of time that they, they have put in them. Kristen Harrington has been sort of the, the leader of this. This is Kristen right here, passing things out. You've had a chance to meet her before. She and, and a team of other people have done, have done all the work on this, really. Thank you. And um, what you have before you is a result of a survey that, that was sent out. And uh, she will go into those uh, results. Uh, she also will talk a little bit about what we plan, 
and we have a motion to, to bring before the board. Uh. Okay, okay, so thank you for having me back. Um, remember last month uh, we reviewed the um, letter and survey questions that we were going to send to parents and guardians both electronically and uh, through paper. So we did get that done and we had a close date for the survey of February 10th. So that was when the electronic survey closed and that is when we um, uh, took our last paper version because parents had the option to fill the survey out online or to return it to us in paper. So we got 83 uh, surveys back by the deadline uh, and of people who had answered all five questions. How and many? So I wanted to, how many yep, could have? How many went out? Uh, it went out to every parent or legal guardian of our students. So I did, I don't know what the total number was. Um, I don't know, Glenda, do you know what that number went out? I believe with a mailing that went to 968 people. Okay, so and it's plus or minus for siblings. Um, well, it went in the report card. Yeah. So for so it would have gone out to everybody. Got a report card, yeah. and and if they have a split family, it went to both households. Um, so I want to walk you through what those um, respondents said, and uh, you have a copy of that in front of you. So the first question was to make sure that the respondent was 18 years of age or older and the parent or legal guardian of the student. That's um, a, a necessary research question to make sure that we're covered, that people are uh, appropriate to be participating in the survey. So the second question, and the, the five questions, if you remember, were um, designed to get us information about the how we might implement the condom availability program, so the different provisions in the program, how parents and guardians would feel about each of those different aspects. So the first one is a parent or legal guardian should have an opportunity to inform the school in writing if he or she does not want his or her adolescent to have access to the condom availability program at Mount Anthony Union High School. This opportunity is often referred to as an opt-out. Okay, so what this means is school would inform parents of the program, and if they don't want their child to, to participate or have access to get condoms at school, they would send a form back to us in writing signed that their child could not access condoms at school. So if you look at the data, and, and we're going to collapse the dis strongly disagree and disagree, strongly agree and agree. You have it broken out. But 41% of our parents and guardians disagree that parents should be able to opt out their kids. 49.4% felt that they should have that um, opportunity. Okay, So the majority of parents um, felt that they should be able to prevent their child from accessing condoms at school. Okay. So the second question um, was about um, what level of education or information should a student have to get before they access condoms at school. So it reads, students who wish to have access to the condom availability program should be required for the first visit to meet with a designated health practitioner or counselor at Mount Anthony Union High School to receive education regarding healthy behaviors and the risks associated with sexual activity. Again, when we look at collapsing the disagree and agree comments, 41% of parents disagreed that kids should have to have an interface with an adult and get individualized education about um, condom use and sexual health. 47% agreed that with distributing condoms at school, there should be an educational component attached to that. Okay? Again, this, qu this question 
um, was really getting at the idea of should, should we have condoms available anonymously somewhere for kids to be able to access on their own independently, or should it be connected to a teachable moment, educational opportunity with some trained adult? Uh, the next question um, is health education, including an educational component regarding the effects of high-risk behaviors in sexually active adolescents should be available. 3.6% of parents disagreed with that statement. 94% of parents did think that we should have um, education regarding healthy sexual um, behavior. Then the last thing we asked was um, at Mount Anthony Union High School, the program coordinator for the condom availability program, and the program coordinator was um, in the survey uh, defined to be the designated uh, adult that could that kids could access condoms from, and parents could check all that apply. That's why you'll see the percentages don't equal 100. Um, so. By and far, the school nurse, 88% um, of parents felt that it should be the school nurse. 60.2% 60 per, 60 of parents thought it should be a school-based clinician. 55.4% said a health teacher. 48.2% said a school counselor. And 22.9% thought it should be an administrator. Um, when we're... Um, Looking at how this might be implemented with your approval, um, the uh, design would be that the designated adults, we would have a male and a female, so that students who had a gender preference um, could choose the gender adult that they were most comfortable having this conversation with. Um, and those faculty members would be trained specifically on how to educate a teenager about condom use and safe sexual health decision making um, by um, Kathleen O'Reilly, who I think is here, I saw her, um, who is a Vermont Department of Health nurse that um, has been working on this project with us. So I'd like to open it to questions and discussion. This is the data we learned. Um, let, let's just, we'll, we'll ask the board to ask if they have questions, and then we will certain, certainly open it up to anybody in the, in the audience. And Kathy, I, I hope that uh, you would, and anybody else here who was on that team, would feel free to respond to a question that you feel appropriate. Are there any questions the board has on you? Question, if, uh, if I want to have, talk to a male, we don't have a male uh, school nurse, right? Right. But we, so wouldn't it be harder to find a male? No. We would, our second person would be a school-based clinician, and we do have a male who is a school-based clinician. That's Bruce Smith. And he's available? He's, yes. Okay. Thank you. That will be part of the, of the um, motion that will take place, and, and there are two people that have been mm -hmm. recommended by the committee just the point that you brought out, they wanted one male and one female, and Kristen and, and her group have interviewed people and, and all that. Yes. Anybody else have a question? When you, well, first of all, it, it says that 83 people out of 960 mm -hmm. is about 8.6% mm -hmm. that we're talking about making a change on, based on their results for the whole school. Yep. Out here. So I just want to make sure everybody realizes that's what we're talking about and whether that's a legitimate percent enough to say let's make this bold move or whether people actually respond or not, I, I think we need to consider that, okay. that number. So, um, you know, Leon, I share your disappointment. Well, not, um, not but, but, and I, but let me finish that, um, you know, when it, it's always a struggle to figure out how um, to engage the community in important discussions about, about school. And when I think about the process that we've gone through here, um, we started this conversation last spring 
right? It was a public conversation that I mentioned here at a meeting. Then we, um, in a more focused way, in the last three meetings, public meetings, um, it was openly discussed. Parents um, who are in our K-12 alert system all received an email with the copy of the letter and the survey, plus they received it uh, in paper format. There was every effort and opportunity for people who um, wanted to be part of this conversation to be part of the conversation. And, um, you know, I certainly would love to hear suggestions on how we could do more outreach to engage people in the conversation, but they had every opportunity and, and only 83 responded. And what I suggest to you as, as our school board and um, you know, our uh, elected officials to help uh, guide our school is that a, a decision has to be made. We've been thoughtful, we've done research, and, and we've engaged in transparent public conversation about it. And this is the best information we have to make a decision and move forward. Good. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, I didn't finish mine. Oh. I, oh. I was only saying that I wasn't disappointed in the outcome. I was saying that that was 8.6% and that we should consider that in terms of making a decision because that's, that's uh, a whole bunch that we didn't capture out here. And uh, if we know anything about things, there are a settlement in terms of people responding. They're not going to do anything until you make the change, and then there's a problem. And so we have to consider how we want to be able to address that situation. When you were going to question three is, is from the next one, okay. you was, I was quoting some percents, and I didn't see how you got where you got. I, behind question three, you were giving some percents, and I'm saying... Yep. I didn't see that on the chart. Okay. Anywhere. So, if we question three was the one about um, students, students having education, to have access to it. Yeah. Right. right. So I said forty-one percent of people disagreed. So we had fifteen point seven percent strongly disagreed and twenty-five point three disagreed. So in research, you collapse those numbers. So you were adding those numbers together? Yep, the 15.7 okay. and the 25.3. Okay, and the last question I had um, was you mentioned some procedures about male and female and so forth along that line. Are those documented in terms of the country procedures that we're saying you want us to say, okay, that it's going to follow uh, it, in terms of guidelines or, or what are they going to be attached to? So that's that part of the discussion support, tonight. Uh, yeah. Support that in some form or fashion with with a, uh, a policy or, or whatever to detach it is what I was wondering of what you had before I make a decision to go along with something. I just wanted to be able to hear what you. Yeah. So um, the the general procedures would be in order to be eligible to access condoms, your parents uh, have have to have not opted you out, right? So um, par part one is parents have the opportunity to say my child cannot access condoms at school. Second would be that there's both a male and a female trained designated staff faculty member um, that would be the specific people kids would have to access uh, the condoms from. Those trained people would have an individualized conversation around um, sexual health decision making and I think that's that's the three key points the faculty members are chosen and trained and parents can opt their child out any other questions Leon or can we move on go ahead I mean I, I, I think can I just say one more thing? Um, the, the question, Leon, about policy, and, and you know that the policy committee ha has started the conversation about this in consultation with Tim um, and Donna Leap about you know having the conversation with the MAU board and with the SU policy committee. Um, the my understanding was that if this board approved us moving in this direction, then the um, 
policy committee would continue to work on developing a formal policy. You're welcome, Mary. Good news. Okay. Okay, Jim, thank you. Ed? No, that was my point, that this has to be flushed out with the policy committee. Yeah. But well, we got to move. We've got to be able to move on it before we can reach that. Is there any structure yet to what this educational component will involve, or is it premature to even ask? Um, no, I don't think it's premature. So, I think when we're talking about our comprehensive health education, there's the the education that happens for all kids in the classroom, and then when we're talking specifically about accessing condoms, it would be um, more specifically to um, how to use a condom correctly and how are you personally making decisions about um, your own dis choices around sexual behavior and how you're negotiating with a partner, how you're communicating and making those decisions so that um, kids have the opportunity to make informed decisions and have an opportunity to really think through what these choices might mean for them individually. I've had people in the community say that they would accept this if there was a, an element where we talked about the ethics and the economics even of, yeah. of getting pregnant at a certain age and so forth and they would find that acceptable if, and I guess I'm asking is that part of the discussion or, or does that need to be developed at another? And, and Ed, when you say the ethics and the economics, do you mean about what is the reality of an unintended pregnancy yeah. or sexually transmitted infection? Yes, mm -hmm. for somebody who's 15 or 16. Yeah. Or I, I think that that's part of an educational conversation, both in the classroom and when accessing a condom okay. availability program. Ed, Thank you. To, to add to that, we have uh, Kathy, are you going to do the education? I forgot. Is there a group? I mean, I'm, yes, I am willing to do that. Right. I think that is something that will have to be, there's a very, very typical coordinated school health team that meets once a month. And I think that's something that, um, although I can provide guidance and probably training, I think there needs to be a long-term plan. And I think the school health team will probably come up with that. There are a number of options available. They asked me, I do, I am not, I'm a school liaison, but I'm also what is known as a hash designee. So I do HIV, AIDS, sexually transmitted infection, hepatitis, counseling and testing, counseling, testing and referral here in Bennington County. So I'm interfacing in a, a, a counseling, testing and referral setting confidentially with people all the time, talking about sexual choices, talking about risk, talking about changing behavior and things like that. That is why they approached me and asked me to help with this. Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions, folks? The evaluation piece behind this. Every, we, we often put things in place all the time, and then we never come back really a lot to look at whether we're successful or not. Mm -hmm. If we open the door, what would be a showstopper once the door is open in terms of evaluation? And I'm, I'm asking these questions because when the policy committee starts to meet, we want to make sure that we have some meat into the policy and make sure that administrative rigs have enough uh, mustard behind them to be able to give the people what they want to know and certain circumstances may come up. So we're opening the door because we say, we, we put all the positive things out there and say, this is what we want them to, I mean, this is what's happening, this is what it should do. Now I want to know if we put it in place, when somebody is going to come back and show us some statistics or something that we either getting worse or we got better? Um, I think our gold standard behavioral data is our youth risk behavior survey. Um, that was the data that we used yep. um, in looking at you know, what is going on for our students from a sexual health perspective. Um, and we use the 2013 data, the 2015 is still not available to us. Um, and if I'm remembering right, it was 47% of our kids have engaged in sexual intercourse, and I think only 55% of them had used a condom the last time. So, so should I say, 
in, in the terms of a policy or procedure that we should have a review annually, two years, three years is what I'm getting at. So that somebody won't drop the boat in terms of showing the data that you talked about. I saw and heard it all. And I'm so, saying, when do we come back? It, uh, uh, this may be a better conversation to have at the policy committee meeting. I, I don't okay. know. But okay. I mean, is there a, a general standard that you review all policies? I, I, and, I think that you know, those, those specifics can be worked out. What we're here, what we're, what we're doing tonight yeah. is trying to get a program initiated. And we all realize that there are, there are many bridges to cross before we finally, we finally get there. But we've got to start someplace, and this is the place where it starts. And those questions that you brought up, Leon, will certainly be, be looked into in, in the same way as we do in anything else. You know, we want to be sure that we're doing it the best way we possibly can. Are there any questions from the audience? If not, then, uh, oh yeah, excuse me, yes. Hi, um, I'm Jeannie O'Neill. I, I have a little bit of a question. I'm really loud. Um, I have kind of a question, kind of a comment. Um, I, of course, work in the community and in education, but I'm also a parent of an MAU student, um, a 10th grader. And knowing teenagers very well, um, their ability to tap into that executive functioning and plan things out is often not the best all the time. Um, so my question is, when we're talking about educating them prior to them having access to condoms, will, will there be like a general kind of pupil day where they can come in and do a whole bunch of sex ed, sex health seminars or classes and then if they are in attendance that day and have signed a form and their parents haven't opted out, then we have actually educated the entire building like that in like the crash course of how to use a condom, how to have conversations about <coughs> condoms, personal responsibility, planning, um, the economic piece, if that's a part of it, the realities of having a baby at 15 and 16, both biologically and economically. Um, because my concern is, they find out about this con availability project and then they go and find their school-based clinician and the clinician's like, you haven't done the course yet. So, it, it, so no, we're not, we have not in the um, coordinated school health team considered a, a full day everybody model. Um, there is the education that happens in the health classroom and then when kids want to access a condom, there's an there's additional um, education that happens not because you've taken a course; it's in that interface with the adult at that time. Okay. And it's the school nurse. It's it will be two different um, people. So okay. So it, nurse or a male clinician. So if my daughter needed a condom um, and she had not taken health yet. Oh yeah. No. Yes. They. She would still have access. Yes. And, and then, because sexual health is also taught in the middle school. So it's not that they don't have any introduction to sexual health until they take it at high school. It's, this is a continuum. Okay. So she then would just need to have a conversation with the school-based clinician, and a condom would then be handed out. Correct. It would be that Fluid. prompt. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Tim, did you have a question? I just wanted to, for something to consider as it goes to policy, which I hope the board adopts, <clears throat> there are high schools that do not provide an opt-out clause for parents. Yeah. The ideal being that a student approaching uh, an educator or a school official and requesting a condom is considering that. And there is a disconnect there if a student arrives and says, hey, I think I'm, I'm going to make this decision with a partner or whatever, and the person gives the education but says, oh, I'm sorry, you're on, the, um, you're on the list, I can't provide one. You place an educator in a difficult position because you know a kid is considering this, but you can't provide them with the tools that addresses the concern that is at the root of this discussion. So I, I just, for the purposes of this board, there are, there are high schools close to us that don't provide that opt-out, and I don't take anything from the survey as a demand for an opt-out clause. And um, your, the point is well taken, and, and there has been a lot of dialogue back and forth about this part of the program. 
Um, and I think what that educator can do in that moment is inform the student of where they can access a condom um, and how they might be able to get one outside of the school setting. It goes to the executive function comment right. earlier made from the committee. <laughs> and, um, Adding a step two and three to that process in the search yes. for a condom. So, okay. so what, what we wanted to do and what this board's direction was to uh, at least bring the topic to the public Absolutely. and ask for and ask what their concerns are and be guided to some degree by what they would like, what the majority of those people would like to see. And that's... Um, and you know, that's one of the one of the reasons that the uh, the motion is, is going to include some of those things. And we may find in time that it we've got to come back and revisit it. I think any time that you go into a program like this, you have to be in a position where you can review it and be sure that the stance that you've taken is the correct stance. And if changes have to be made, then you then they have to be made. Okay, are there any other questions? Oh. Kristen mentioned that that process will take place right when you go through the policy committee of SBSU because all the boards uh, in the districts will get a chance to see what it is that's in place and weigh in on it as another method of, of whether we're doing the right thing before it get approved. In the well, this, the MAU um, board can, can move ahead with it. Well, it, it's... it's the MAU board is asking for something to be done, and that goes to the SBSU, which builds the piece and come out with everybody on and with input because this is not the students in this in and in in Mount Anthony actually comes from all over the place, and we have an agreement with SBSU to have an SBSU policy for everyone to weigh in on it, and I just want to make sure you know that that is a that has a lot more weight to it too to go along with the numbers in terms of a reply when I mentioned the 8%, I'm saying you're going to have all the boards saying yes yeah. along so, that line and that, that's so, something to consider. Yeah, I have a question for you because I, um, I know that getting policy approved is a very lengthy process and um, in some discussions that we had, um, I had the understanding that if the MAU board approved implementing this, we could begin to move towards implementation while the policy committee was working out the, the policy piece. And so I, I want to be clear, is this something that we're going to have to wait potentially a year plus as it moves through all the boards and gets final SU policy approval? Or if this board approves us having a kind of availability program, can we move forward and implement that? This board has the right to move ahead. We, we've done lots of times where we've passed something where we haven't had a policy that can be reviewed at a later date. But what we're really voting on tonight is that to move forward with this program with the idea that um, it will be reviewed and, and looked at as we get more specific about some of the details. But to answer her question directly, uh, Tim mentioned that the board do something, but I would not be in favor of doing something without having something on paper of this magnitude to make sure. It's not going to take a year because part of the work is going to come from you and the group that's going to be responsible for helping write the policy and we're going to review it and critique, critique it and make sure that there's nothing left off uh, that's going to be a problem out here and move it forward. So it won't be a, a, a multiple year process out here unless and there's something seriously wrong with it. Well, we can, we can battle it, but I, I feel strongly that, the, that we, we have to move ahead on this and we don't want to get bogged down with, uh, with details. Um, but anyway, let's go through with the motion and we'll just see where we come out. Okay. Um, so Tim had asked me to, to prepare a motion for you all to um, consider and vote on. Um, and so the, the... I think a member of the committee would have to read it then. A member of the board would have to read the motion. Yeah. Okay. Give it okay to you. you want to read it for us? I can try. Okay. <laughs> I hope my script is legible to you. A motion to approve the implant 
implementation of the condom availability program at Mount Anthony Union High School. Condoms will be available from specifically trained and designated faculty who will provide education regarding healthy behavior and the risks associated with sexual activity. Parents will have the ability to notify the school in writing if they do not want their child to access condoms at the school. Very good. Thank you. Do we have a second to that motion? Second. All, any further discussion? All, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Two opposed and one, two, three, four, five in favor of it. Very good. So it passes. Very good. Thank you. We can move on then. Um, I'm going to ask the board if they could take uh, Principal Glenda Cresto out of order. She'd like to get to whatever's left of the basketball <laughs> game if she could give her report first. Sure. Okay. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, so my principal report tonight is going to focus on student activities since we last met and there's quite a few of them. So our wrestling team um, is in the state championships on Friday and Saturday. The finals are Saturday at 6 o'clock, Mill River High School in Clarendon. And there was two weeks ago a lovely tribute to their coach Scott Legacy who was moving on to coach college wrestling at Castleton that brought back alums and many fans for the final home wrestling weekend. And we are very, very fortunate that Mr. Legacy has, will continue to teach at Mount Anthony even though he will no longer be coaching wrestling. Um, boys basketball is this weekend in the semifinals against number one seed Burlington, um, three o'clock on Saturday at UVM and we wish them well going into this final game before the state championship. Um, girls basketball, as you know, is in their play down tonight um, at MAU against Middlebury, and if they win this, they go to the quarterfinals against CVU, who have won 80 straight games. Um, so we wish them well, and I'm really hoping I can get back for the final quarter. Um, the ski team championships um, are March 1st and 3rd. We were supposed to be po hosting these, but unfortunately we have no snow because all of our efforts to think snow did not work. And so they will be traveling to the Rickert Nordic Center in East Middlebury um, for these, for the ski team championships. Um, Skylar Hoyt, a sophomore at MAU, won the long jump at the state indoor track championship and he qualified for a top seed in the New Englands which will be in Boston on Sunday at the Reggie Lewis Center and we really wish him well as he moves on in that and the dance team finished fifth in the state in both palm and hip-hop last weekend at the state dance championships um, we have one National Merit Scholarship finalist we've been informed of. I'm not releasing his name because I'm not sure he knows, um, but we do, <laughs> we have been <laughs> informed that we have one of our students that has moved into the National Merit finalists. Um, last week, um, our students in advanced design have been participating all of last semester in an urban design project under the direction of Barbara Ackerman. And it was called the Bennington of the Future collaboration with SVC. And they spent the semester exploring urban design concepts and how they might apply locally to Bennington as it moves forward in becoming a destination for um, tourism and for business development. And they imagined possibilities, created storefront designs for buildings that are currently in downtown that are either not occupied or under occupied. And they built scale models of their ideas and did some um, papers to explain their thinking. And their work is right now um, in the Bergdorf Gallery at the Everett Mansion at SVC. It will be on display until March 3rd, and I really, really encourage the community and all of you to try to see this exhibit. Um, their designs are really quite amazing, and they made their public, they made their thinking public, 
and they had, there was a wonderful panel discussion with architects from Burlington, um, where professors from Bennington and professors from SVC, me and some Burlington people really talked with them about their vision for, Burl for Bennington of the future. And it's really quite remarkable work. So the gallery is open from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and from 1 to 4 on Saturday. And I really encourage you um, to see it. <clears throat> um, on April 22nd, MAU is hosting the annual Youth Summit for Bennington. And the theme this year is Healthy State of Mind. There's informational booths and workshops that are being coordinated by our community partners. And I will be saying more, more about that as this evolves at the March meeting, but I wanted to give you a heads up that that again is happening. And finally, tomorrow, um, Thursday night at the high school, there is the second Act 77 um, informational meeting that has been targeted to ninth grade parents, but we've opened it up to the school. And we'll be discussing from 6.30 to 8 o'clock the flexible pathways that we have available for students going forward next year. What was that date? Mm -hmm. The date? Thursday, okay. from 6.30 to 8. And it's the second in a workshop series that we're doing. Thank you. And that's all I have. OK, well, uh, you're excused. And Thank good you. luck to the girls. I appreciate the opportunity to go see the rest of this game. Very good. We can move on, then, uh, to finance. We have the treasurer's report. We just need a motion to accept it, please. Second. Second. We do have warrants that need to be signed right. also. Okay. Yep. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of accepting the treasurer's report signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? <coughs> Passes. Uh, the yeah. budget status report is for your information the award of a Ooh. boiler contract. Paul, are you going to go? Paul's here. Yep. Thank you. That's it. This is I just want to okay. My dear gentlemen, uh, approximately three weeks ago in the uh, Red Brick building at the rear of our campus, one of the two <coughs> boilers that supplies the main heat for that building uh, failed. Uh, what happened is one of these sections in the boiler cracked. Uh, no obvious signs of what it caused that as, as far as just a manufacturer's defect. So uh, a request for proposal was developed to remove and replace that boiler. You should have an information sheet that was passed out in the packets. Uh, it, you know, ten uh, local companies were provided uh, directly contacted with the request for proposal. Of those ten, uh, five of them submitted bids. On the sheet, you'll see the bid analysis for each one of them, uh, with uh, Benton Cooling and Heating having the uh, low bid for the five that were submitted. All the bids seemed competitive. All the bids uh, met specifications as far as what we were asking for in the request for proposal. And as far as funding for it in the capital projects in this year's budget, there still remains uh, approximately $13,000, which would be enough to cover uh, the cost of replacement for the boiler. Thank, thank you. There's any questions? Yes, thank you very much. Are there any questions of Paul? Just one minute, Leon. All right. Let me move on. There's three boilers back there, right? There's two in the, two? the red brick building. Okay. Uh, career. In the high school itself, there's three boilers. If there, I'm confused now. There's three in the, the, in high, the school high school building. Yes. Are we talking about the wood? No. no. In, the, in the high school campus, the red brick building to the rear left that has the ideals program, B19, alternate education. Okay, the old CDC yeah. building. Old vocational building is also referred to. Would it make more sense to replace one of the boilers in the the MAU building and run lines out to the the old building? I would think the scope and cost uh, to do that yes it would, would be, be larger would be but, very significant but technically would it be make more sense I don't think so but it would, I would have to do a lot more study or analysis okay. on that. The reason why I don't think so at the moment, though, is just based on the current heat and situation in the high school, because there is multiple additions over time, and we have the, you know, everyone, I think everyone in the room appreciates some of the heat differentials that <laughs> happen in the high school between different areas. I would 
Yes, I'm just I fearful know. that we would create something more like that as well. Okay. But we could obviously it could be a long-term capital project, but we'd have to take some more study and analysis. Huh? Very good. Are there any more questions? Okay, Leon, would you like to make a motion? Well, my question could follow on that. I was wondering why we didn't run off the ball out. I mean, the wood boiler over there. That was I, I think the it would be the same reason, Leon, with just the, the scope of cost to try to tear up to put in the lines to get over to that from the location. It would, would be what I would suspect, but obviously it would, it would be something that could be looked at as a capital project down the road as well, okay. if that would be feasible. Well, I'll move the, uh, the, the recommendation. <clears throat> Why don't we re yeah. just read off what that recommendation is, that banking, heating, and cooling in the amount of $11,149 for the replacement of the of the uh, of the boiler what do we officially call that building now it's throughout the building it's referred to as old vocational building still okay as far old as my staff so if we want to building. use that it makes sense do we have a second to that second. any t further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye aye very good we can move on now this is the uh, motion that uh, i was asked to read to authorize the chair to execute a contract with personnel energy pa partners with a net metering credit of no less than 24%. This is a continuation of the uh, solar project that MAU along with other uh, districts is involved in, building a large solar uh, facility, not on, our, not on anybody's campus, but somewhere up, up north, I'm not even sure where it is. And the, and the advantage to us is that there is, no, there is no cost to us. There is no cost to us. And the, uh, the way that we benefit from it is that we, our electrical bill is reduced by at least 24%. Our electrical bill is released by at least 24%. So even if the cost of electricity goes up, we still get the 24% reduction uh, in terms of what we have to pay. And the reason that, that this works out is, and I'm really not sure of all the facts, is that some of these large corporations put up these solar factories, solar installations, and get tremendous tax credits and other benefits from it, and that's the way they make, they make their money. So there is really no loss, uh, no, no downside for us. Um, I wish I could be more specific about it. Rick had another engagement. Maybe Paul could answer questions if there are any other questions. But do we have a motion to accept this? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Any questions? Paul, did I don't I don't did I describe it <laughs> relatively accurately? I believe so, Tim. Okay. For what, as as much as the details I know, but as I understood those. So. Those are all the key points for that Rick had made. Okay, thank you very much. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Very good. <clears throat> Can move on to the consent agenda. Fran? I'll move it. <laughs> Do you have a second? Second. All right, any discussion on any of the articles? Leon, how about you? On the consent agenda, what I read online versus Item number six, it has one field trip to Gifford, New Hampshire, and then I saw New York City, I saw Quebec, I saw a whole bunch of things that... I have, a, we received um, an amended consent, consent agenda that Mary Lee posted um, today, but there's hard copies. If anyone did not see them beforehand, so the other field trips are on there. We received them after the original agenda went out. So I've read them all, so I don't have a, a problem. And I, agree I didn't that read them. Where was the information? In terms of what we asked, yeah. <coughs> so here it is. Maybe some of them have some problems with them, not, not knowing about them, but I, if you read online, they're there, and I'm saying they meet the requirement. And so uh, I feel safe in are there, are there any other any other questions concerning the consent agenda? If there are not, I'll accept that we have a motion on the floor already. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Very good. We can move on then. Policies, Leon? We have uh, substitute teachers. Uh, 
the policy up for warning. That's 4261. And most of that was clarification and cleaning up the policy to make it uh, sink and, and, and go in a, in, a, in a nice, formal manner the way it should. So uh, I would like to recommend that we uh, warn this particular policy. I'll move it. Okay, we have a discussion. I know that there are, uh, Dave has some concerns. Yeah, I'm trying to, there it is. So substitutes get paid different rates. Is, am I reading that correctly? Yes. And how do you determine that? Whether they still have a educator's uh -huh. license or not and what their level of degree is. Mm -hmm. Dave, was there anything else? Question. Just one minute. I think. Did you have something else? I, I don't know if this is the place, but... Uh, I talked to a couple of substitute teachers and I thought they made some good suggestions on how they could work more efficiently here, but I don't know if this is the place where that comes up. The policy well, committee really... It, yeah, it, that's what I was going to say. This is a warning. Mm -hmm. and we, we discussed it at the policy committee to bring it to this point. And so it's still not adopted in this format, even if we need to. So those people that have some concerns in terms of what they think something should be. They, they're, they're more than happy to voice their opinion in, at the meeting or uh, provide it to uh, uh, Donna Lee uh, at the central office so that we can get it and read it and make sure we agree to have it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, just, I don't know what it is that they're talking about, but we thought we went through this thing methodically uh, to get it squared out of way so we could miss something, but we're willing to look and listen again. Dave, is that? I can I think do that. That certainly makes sense to me. That's the. Mm -hmm. we, we've, mm -hmm. got a, we've got something going. It's like so many other things we do, and, and we're just refining the, the policy that would eventually uh, clarify. Ed, did you have a question? No, it was answered. Okay. In the. Fine. Any other discussion. Any other questions on on that? Do you want to go through them individually, Leon? Or? That's, that's, well, this is the only one that's up for warning because it's. Is this one? I'd like to have a, a motion in a second to get that one, and then the other two are around for adoption. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to accept policy number 4261. I moved it. Second. And Kevin seconded it. Okay, I'm glad right <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Okay, we can go down to 5015. Now, 5015 is personalized learning plan, and that has gone around through all the other districts and everybody in back around here. I'll move it for a second. Any discussion on it? And that's, that again is a, a you know, policy. And policies are made as guidelines, and we still are just getting into personal learning plans. And I'm sure there'll be changes that will be coming up to that as, as time goes on and we learn more about it. The procedure part. This is the policy. The procedures have not been written. So we're going to. We're feeling that. Right. And, and yeah, right. Like, all right. Yeah. Since, since the personal learning plan applies to students starting in the seventh grade. No, I think it's <coughs> seventh grade. You're right. How is this going to be managed with Pownall and Shaftesbury that still have their seventh and eighth grade? Pownall and Shaftesbury in other words, don't have a seventh and eighth grade. Okay, I thought they did. <laughs> Sixth grade is the only is the only grade that that is that is we have some in the middle school and we okay. have some yep. that are still in my in my the error. School. Okay. okay, I'm gonna give them back to you if you want. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that, that's perfectly fine. Okay, are there? Actually, I think we have that a, we have a motion on the floor. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions. Very good. We can go down to 6,000. I mean, that's curriculum policy. It's uh, been going around and so forth, and we made no changes, and it's up for adoption. I'll move it. Second. Any questions? I did read that one. It, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Very good. We can move down. Uh, we heard from Glenn Tim. Uh, a couple of things for the, the board and the community. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say... Uh, Thank you to uh, Mr. Mike Carver of Inkspot Press. He made a generous donation of materials and storage cards 
to this space. Uh, this is the library uh, at the middle school and he has been working closely with Maria Lanou who is our librarian here. And it is her dream to build what is called a maker space, a drop-in space for both the school day and after school where kids can come and work on various projects. And through the generous uh, donations of Mr. Carver, there are now more and more materials available for students uh, to work with. Um, and it is our hope that uh, community partners like InkSpot and other groups that Ms. Lanou are working with will continue. And as you meet here in the years to come, you'll hopefully see more and more of those projects um, coming out. Um, Winter Carnival, our annual community event, is uh, in two weeks. It'll be March the 5th. It's from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. We offer games, prizes, and food. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's open to everyone in the community. We see a lot of little ones from the elementary schools coming up and seeing us. Uh, we would encourage folks to come up, especially if it's one of those days where you don't want to be stuck inside the house. Uh, come out and see us and enjoy um, checking in with folks. And uh, like I said, a number of games and prizes going on. It's a, it's a fun day. Uh, the middle school will be presenting uh, Music Man Junior, our uh, winter musical here. It'll be this Saturday from at 7 p.m. There's also a performance on Sunday at 3 p.m. Tickets are available at the door. We encourage folks to come out and see that they do a nice job. The students have been um, uh, working hard on that. And then last but not least, uh, we continue to offer the Mosaic After School program here at the middle school. Uh, students are provided with after school snacks, there is transportation available, and there are 16 different programs being offered. The start of the third session was this past Monday. We have a number of programs that still would be able to accept students. It's a very low cost opportunity. It runs for eight weeks. It's $20, but there's a sliding scale, so no family is turned away. I strongly encourage uh, students to participate um, before we really get going in the sports season in spring, which will eventually show up. What ages and what students are they are eligible? This is uh, this is available for all sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Not necessarily just from MAU, but it could be from the districts that have sixth grades. Absolutely, we have students from uh, homeschool as well as other schools coming here for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. We welcome right. them all. And where would they find a list of those programs? Uh, there is a program in the front office, a hard copy of that, and we can also send a digital one if parents want to send me an email, I can connect them with Megan Donkers for that. Why don't you just give a phone number? Is it uh, 7541? Yep. Yeah, they can call it. Go ahead. Absolutely. So 802-447-7541. Uh, so you can contact school, um, and I will connect you with Megan Donkers, who is the director full-time. Thank you. Any questions of Tim? Very good. We can move on. We don't have a student representative here today. Superintendent? Yep. Um, most of my time I'm going to need is uh, in executive session discuss two personnel matters with you. Um, one thing I do want to say is we wind down to our final meeting before we reorganize next month. Uh, we're putting together, you know, as, as unbelievable as this might seem, we have four meetings left in this calendar year. Uh, so we're putting together what our presentations will be for those next for meetings. Uh, so any suggestions from board members or if there's a topic that you want to see addressed, uh, ones that are a student internships, I know that Glenda is planning on a presentation for that for the April meeting uh, and um, personal learning plans possibly for the March meeting. Any other topics that the board would like addressed, uh, otherwise we're going to go ahead and, and fill up the meetings, but if there are things you don't have to tell me tonight, but you, you're, you're free to, but you can email uh, me and we can start organizing that for the agendas that are left. It, it may be premature, but since the Act 77 allows students to get credit for work experience, is there any, any rules that have been developed by the Department of Education for that, or is it going to be up to the superintendent and the board to determine what kind of credit for what kind of work is so permitted you like and maybe we should have a discussion about that at some point. So potential would be Act 77? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. We're, having a, we're having a discussion on 77 maybe incorporated in that. In part of, yeah, because that would also be on. 
Okay. Aye. And not expecting everyone to answer, reflect on it. There's something that you haven't seen at a meeting for a while and you would like information on it. We'll put it on future agendas as we start to plan the final four meetings of this school year. Very good. Okay. Other than that, um, just that I need to discuss right. a couple of matters with you. Yep. Are there any questions for the superintendent? Okay, we can move on then. I don't have any report. Oh, and I, I just wanted to say that I wouldn't have approved a field trip to Yankee Stadium. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looked good. It came from uh, the little school. <laughs> yeah, just, just one minute. I... Then we packed, maybe, but yeah. <laughs> Pack. Can't get tickets. Yeah. Uh, okay, other? Others, I just want to re remind everybody again. I mean, if this is a board that we finally uh, got together in terms of the ESP contract is going to need just to, to sit and talk about how to approach things. So uh, you can start to give me your ideas if you want to. I'm going. It's an informational meeting Thursday, uh, yeah. Thursday night for me as uh, representing this board along with the other board members. So I'll be looking for and have my ear open for you. That's all. We need to get a hold of Cat TV to tell us there's an informational meeting because Beck needed to know that when you guys start talking. Oh, when we start talking, this is for just a well. He may want to do that too. So, but just I throw that out there. Who do you want to? Yeah, that's Beck at Cat TV. She wants to be notified when you whatever you start doing to let them know. Dave. Under the category of uh, recognizing people that are doing a good job, uh, I think we could write a letter to Bruce Smith, our ski coach. Uh, not only has the ski team been pretty good, but he has 46 kids on that team. Uh, when it was 20 below, I was there, and those 46 kids are slogging around, and uh, it's not a lot of glamour there, but it's, you know, it's a great sport, a lot of carryover. I think he does a good job, and I'd like to send him a letter and tell him that we've noticed that. That's great. We don't necessarily have to use the clerk to do that. Would you be willing to do it? Yeah. Now, is this Nordic or Alpine? Or Nordic. Formation? It's Nordic. We don't have an Alpine. We don't have a hill. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll write it and give it to you. And it's been a tough season. Yeah. And if you need help, you can come in, Mary Lee, or I can help you with that. Anybody can I can understand kids being out there at 20 below, but why were you out there, Dave? Because <laughs> <laughs> it was snow. That was one of the few days. <laughs> I, just, I just need a, a, a motion then to authorize Dave to, to write a letter, a consultory letter to... Uh, so, so, so moved. moved. Second, third. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if there are not, uh, no other items... To be brought before this board, uh, we can adjourn. I need a motion to go into executive session. So we may reconvene for action. Then. Yes, we may. We're just not sure. Okay, so we'll meet in the back room. Thank you all.